Welcome to Hornbill TV's Explainer, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Al Nguli. Believe it or not, if you search for music on YouTube a little more than about 10 years ago or so, you most probably wouldn't find any. YouTube was this sketchy little, obscure little website then, when it launched in 2005, and the years following it, people started to slowly notice it. In fact, Nagaland caught up with the social media craze only during the late 2000s, especially from around 2010. So my YouTube channel and two or three others were the only Naga channels back those days. Today, YouTube is home to every kind of content, from music to quantum fan mechanics to commerce and all kinds of businesses forming probably the biggest and most accessible video sharing website in the world. In 2023, it has more than 2.70 billion active users, while YouTube Premium has about 80 million active users worldwide. According to data, about 52% of internet users access YouTube at least once a month and over 122 million people visit YouTube every day via its website and apps. This also means that there are times when sneaky little shady characters often misuse the platform for shady reasons, ladies and gentlemen. These include people pushing sexually explicit content. Of course, it's rare to come across sexually offensive content these days, except for physical violence, of course, we have a lot of visuals there where you can see violent acts including wars but sexually explicit content was uh, something that was known only those days there was a time when the website was no stranger to pornographic materials but there are still some shady characters doing business on youtube and other social media platforms including what we now know as x former twitter so the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has issued notices to YouTube, the chatting app Telegram and X, formerly Twitter, to remove all child sexual abuse materials from their platforms. The government has warned that in case they fail to do so, they'll be losing their legal immunity on user-generated content. Uh, the Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, said in a statement that the government is determined to build a safe and trusted internet use under the IT rules of India. If the platforms do not act on the notice in the next few days, they could risk losing their safe harbor protection. That's what the government said. So what does safe harbor for the internet mean here, ladies and gentlemen? Safe harbors on the internet means a level of protection given by the government to all online service providers from monetary liability because of the actions of the users. It allows social media platforms to avoid liability of any kind for posts made by users. So according to the notice of the government of India sent to YouTube, the ministry said it had issued an advisory on August 29, asking the company to address such content on its platforms. According to the ministry, YouTube did not mention in its response the assurance of non-availability of such content. So the government directed YouTube to ensure that as part of its obligation of diligence, safety and trust, it should immediately remove all such offensive content from the website. In its response dated September 22nd, 2023, there is no mention of assuring non-availability of such content on the company's platform. Uh, that's what the government of India's notice to YouTube stated. Uh, further, the ministry told Telegram, the chatting app, the child abuse material should be promptly and permanently removed from its website. The company is also directed to implement proactive measures such as content moderation and reporting mechanisms. Uh, this is to prevent future dissemination of offensive content. That's what the government has said. The ministry said that delay in complying with the notices will result in the withdrawal of their safe harbor protection under Section 79 of the Information and Technology Act. Mr. Chandra Shegar also wrote on X 
stating that there will be zero tolerance for criminal and harmful content on Indian internet. Uh, the information technology rules under the IT Act clearly lays down the expectation from intermediaries. They cannot host criminal and harmful content such as CSAM, that is child sexual abuse materials, that is what the minister wrote. Uh, the Information Technology Act of 2000 provides the legal framework to address pornographic content including child sexual abuse material. Uh, Section 66E, 67, 67A and 67B of the IT Act outlines all the penalties for online transmission of obscene or pornographic content. YouTube says that child sexual abuse material represents only a small fraction of a percent of the content which the website removes. Google's transparency report says it has heavily invested in engineering resources to uh, detect CSAM in ways that are precise and effective. It has long used this technology to prevent the distribution of known child sexual abuse imagery videos on YouTube. That's what the company says in its statement. Thank you for watching Hornbill TV's explainer. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alan Willing. See you next time.